Ilanko, we are driven by our vision of food and companionship enriching life. In today's news, proposed new legislation could see commercial farmers being allocated lease water. This comes after the Department of Water and Sanitation's proposed new water licensing regulations, which require up to 75% black South African shareholding. AgriSA says that should these regulations be passed in its current form, it will have a devastating impact on the sector and its ability to provide the country with a secure supply of food. The Western Cape Department of Agriculture also announced it dismay regarding the race-based quotas. Provincial Minister Ivan Mayer said the Western Cape is South Africa's largest export region and the proposed regulation will harm the industry and have a knock-on effect on the economy. Here is Mayer with more. The Western Cape Department of Agriculture rejects the draft race-based quota regulation for the allocation of water rights in South Africa. The Western Cape government supports a needs-based approach in the allocation of water rights. The current race-based water regulation will destroy agriculture and food security in South Africa. I will now oppose this draft draconian and irrational regulation to protect our agricultural sector and jobs in the Western Cape. In Suisse, Dr. Ivan Meyer van die Weskaapse Departement van Landbouw. Technische probleme op die departement van indiensneming en arbeid, sy online stelsel, het meegebring dat die spaardatum vir die verklaring van loone tot 30 juni van jaar uitgestel is. In gevolge die wet op vergoeding vir beroepsbeserings en siektes, moet alle boerderijen by die departement van indiensneming en arbeid sy vergoedingsfonds geregistreer wees, om hulle werkers teen werksverwante beserings te dek. Boerderijen moet ook jaarliks hulle loone by die fonds verklaar. Die maatskapie Work Accident Support het producenten gemaakt dat jewige boetes opgeleek kan word, indien die loone nie voor die spaardatum verklaar word nie. Gareth Allen is onlangs as Pumalanga Landbouw sy provinciale jongboer vir 2023 aangewees. Gareth is een lid van Broodsnijers plaasboerenvereniging in die Middelburg district en boer op die plaas Hartbeesfontein. Gareth is die vijfde geslag in hierdie familieboerderij en hy sal Pumalanga Landbouw later van jaar in die 2023 Toyota SA Agri SA jongboer van die jaarkompetitie verteenwoordig. Die voorspelde El Nino weerverskynsel het vroeger as verwag in beweeg en skielike baie reen in die kaap veroorzaak. Hier is weerkenner Johan van der Berg. Die El Nino het nou baie vannig die laaste paar weke ontwikkel en ons is ten einde mei het ons oorgegaan in El Nino waar ons in die trale fase was vir so'n maand of twee. Die groot ding is dat het baie vannig ontwikkel en baie vroeg uh, gewoonlik is het maar hier augustus septemberse kant waar El Nino eers sterk genoeg kan wees om geclassificeerd te word as El Nino en ons sit nou al daarmee en dit gaan, dit is so'n bykie onbekende terrein en ek denk dit is al een van die oorzake hoe kom die Westkaap nou baie reen kry want gewoonlik is El Nino geassocieer met koue fronte wat ook redelijk hoog tegen die Westkus in die gedeeltes opkom dit lyk ook asof El Nino baie sterk gaan ontwikkel maar dat ons het draaipunt gaan bereik hier na november, december se kant toe. Maar dalk lichtpunt kan wees as het so vroeg kan draai en dalk kan veroorzaak dat die tweede deel van die seisoen uh, nie so droog is as met die traditionele laat ontwikkelde uh, El Nino nie. En so sê Johan van der Berg. Hortgrove's first ever Dan Strydom Research and Technical Prize was recently awarded to Hink Kriesel. The award recognizes his dedication to the deciduous fruit industry in the field of the post-harvest quality of palm fruit. This award was made to Chrysal during the recent Hortgrow Awards held in Stellenbosch. Chrysal, who is a quality assurance manager at True Cape, was described as a true industry servant who over many years tirelessly and selflessly provide key inputs to various industry work groups 
and advisory committees. Onder the Poor Biological Products recently held its first media session in seven years to address what is referred to as inaccurate media reports. The briefing also addressed production issues and problems with the availability of OBP's vaccines. Luvoyo Mabomba, interim CEO of OBP, gave PLAS TV more insight into OBP's current situation. There have been concerns from our clients about the availability of a vaccine in the, in the recent past, the couple, past, uh, past couple of years. The main challenge that we've been having is the fact that uh, uh, our uh, manufacturing equipment uh, had been having a couple of breakdowns within it. You have to recall that our manufacturing equipment is equipment that we import from overseas countries and maintenance sometimes becomes a, a, a challenge in, in, in doing that. So, so we, we're working on that uh, right now. One of the, I mean, two, two of the strategies that we, we've implemented as a company uh, is the is the we're putting together a a preventative uh, uh, maintenance plan to ensure that we keep track of the of the lifespan of the of the equipment that we use in the manufacturing environment and make sure that it gets serviced it uh, maintained uh, proactively so that it doesn't it doesn't break down the second strategy that we've put together as an organization was to put together an investment plan to refurbish our, our own equipment so that uh, the equipment that we've been using for quite some time uh, is actually replaced with, with, with new equipment. That's the, those are the two big things that we're doing as, as, a, as a company. Uh, I want to, to, to also share with, with you and your viewers the fact that uh, uh, we as the business are currently running a seven-day uh, production uh, uh, shift so as to make sure that in preparation for for the upcoming vaccination uh, period that we've got the required quantities for the vaccines uh, that, 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 that we have. So, so those are some of the strategies that we've uh, put together as an organization to ensure that we respond uh, to the challenges of, 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 the, the, of, the, of the company. The last thing that I want to say, uh, one of the challenges, uh, perhaps the interpretation about vaccine availability is because uh, customers of ours don't know where to find the, the, the vaccine because we have to recall the fact that when we produce the vaccine, we produce it so that our distributors out there, the co-ops, the veterinary wholesalers, the veterinary, the veterinarians themselves in practice actually have got access to the vaccine. We don't hoard the vaccine in our environment. So one of the key challenges that we're looking at right now is to see what kind of apps that we can develop so that a, a client sitting out there in, 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 in the Southern Cape, in the in South Coast, in, in the Eastern Cape, in KwaZulu Natal, actually knows in within proximity of where he or she farms with the, with livestock can find the, the products because we know exactly where we've sent the product. So we're looking at developing an app like that so that it becomes freely available to the clients. The clients can know exactly where the, the, the closest radius they can be able to find the product. So those are some of the strategies we're putting together as a business. One, some of them are in place, some are on uh, research platform, including the app that we are looking at, uh, which will solve a lot of the problems that our clients have in terms of access to, to the vaccines. Thanks. Good news from Luvoyo Mabomba of OBP. Let's see what the future holds. The Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozi Okonye Weala, has received the FARA Leadership Award for her contribution to agricultural science, technology and innovation in Africa. The award was presented at the African Agribusiness and Science Week, held from 5 to 8 June in Durban. Okonya Weala, who currently serves as the 7th Director General of the WTO, is the first woman and first African to lead the organization. She is noted for being a strong advocate of agricultural research and development, agricultural productivity and increasing access to food for African farmers and consumers. 
En die laaste volveiling van die seisoen het van deze week plaasgevind. Die rand het sterker ten oor die vernaamste geld in die opdag 1 vertoon en verder opdag 2 versterk. Dit het echter ten die einde van dag 2 weer verswak, wat aanleiding gegeet tot moeilike verhandelingsomstandighede. Heinrich Victor van OVK brei nou hier oor uit. Ons sê vir u, goeiemorgen uit die wolkantoor. Nou op die 35ste en ook die laaste wolveiling van die 2022-2023 wolseisoen, wat op 7 juni plaasgevind het, het die Cape Wools Marino aanwijzer met 1.1% vir nie gesertificeerde wol en met 1.9% vir gesertificeerde wol swakker verhandel ten oor die vorige veiling. En ten een skoonprys van 165 rand en 58 cent per kilogram en 178 rand en 98 cent per kilogram onderscheidelik gesluit. Die Australiese EMI het ook evens verswak en so 0.1% verloor ten oor die vorige veiling. Nou, die evense daling kan grootliks toegeskryf word aan die evens beter, maar variërende prestatie van die Zuid-Afrikaanse rand ten die vernaamste geldeenhede tijdens die veiling, wat dan ook gesorg het vir uitdagende kopers toestande. En daarmee Heinrich Victor sy laaste volmarkverslag vir hierdie seisoen as ook die einde van vandagse nies.